Could we have everyone take their seats, please? We'll bring the land use hearings to order. County manager. Back, uh, we have one item uh, on our land use hearings this morning. It's PLN 2014-00038. Uh, uh, it's our oil and gas regulation amendments. And Joel Greenland is here to talk through that with our planning staff. Thank you. This is case PLN 2014-00038, oil and gas regulation amendments. Summary of the request is amendments to chapters one, two, three, and four of Adams County's development standards and regulations with respect to special use permits, oil and gas, well drilling and production, and miscellaneous other changes. The background of these changes, advances in oil and gas extraction technologies, increases in oil and gas activities across Colorado, including the Wattenberg Field and the Niobrara Shale Formation, both in Adams County, Potential impacts um, pretty much was the impetus to reassess the current regulations for oil and gas drilling and production in the county. So case analysis. Back in late 2013, the staff began to study current oil and gas drilling and production land use regulations, and the initial recommendations um, were that they needed to be current with applicable state laws, they needed to be transparent and easily understood by applicants and the general public, and finally protect the safety and welfare of Adams County residents. So the first purpose of the changes to oil and gas regulations is to be consistent with state authority, to increase information sharing and safety, and also clarifying the permit process. So taking us back to February of 2014, the county became involved with the Air Quality Control Commission hearings re regulating emissions from oil and gas operations in Colorado. Adams County became an important uh, member of the local government coalition. We were the party to the AQCC hearings, and other members included Boulder, La Plata, Pitkin, and San Miguel counties, and the cities of Boulder and Fort Collins, and the city and county of Denver. Through a lot of hard work, um, AQCC's oil and gas control measures revisions were adopted and um, accepted on February 23rd, 2014. And basically they included a lot of uh, control measures, but some of the highlights were a leak detection and repair or LDAR, increased record keeping reporting requirements, extensive reductions in volatile organic compound emissions or VOC emissions, totaling approximately 93,500 tons per year, and regulating methane emissions, and this was the first in the nation, approximately 65,000 tons per year. So the background of the regulations, they've essentially been the same since 1980 when they uh, appeared first in our re zoning regulations, and they've been the same since, um, since that time and are um, located in section 410.02.0302 of the code. The regulations have general standards as far as building permits and special performance standards. However, some of these performance standards and some of the conditions are preempted by state regulations as administered and enforced by the Colorado Oil and Gas Con Conservation Commission, also known as COGCC. So the COGCC regulates oil and gas operations in the state of Colorado, and they do not negate the authority of local control, though. And so local regulation cannot create what's called an operational conflict, which basically arises when the effectuation of a local interest materially impedes or destroys the state's interest in its regulation of oil and gas operations. So pretty much the county permitting uh, is primarily for ensuring operators are in compliance with county regulations. Um, these are mostly related to transportation, such as oversized loads, culvert, and flood floodplain use permits. Um, the county tracks locations and activities of all well sites. Currently, there are 4,046 well sites in Adams County with 883 that are active and producing. Of these 883 active and producing wells, 12% are within a mile of a school, 55% are within three miles of a school, and 78% are within five miles of a school. 23% of all wells in Adams County are within one mile of a residential property, 48% are within three miles of residential property, and 65% are within five miles of a residential property. 
In 2014, the COGCC approved 34 permits compared to 40 in 2013 and 2012 and 8 in 2011. This is a map showing uh, where uh, active wells are. As you can see, the red dots are where the well sites are. And they show pretty much where the Wattenberg Field and Liabar Shale Formation, where the um, actual product is. So how does this relate to our comprehensive plan for the county? Well, in 2012, when we updated Imagine Adams County, it recognizes extraction of natural resources, which contributes to the local economy, both in employment and tax income. Um, it also recognizes that there needs to be sensitive extraction and reclamation practices um, in order to prevent potential negative impacts, and it also contains a resource extraction policy, which basically states that um, extraction of subsurface resources in accordance with state law, but require mitigation of undesirable impacts to the natural environment and community, as well as plans for viable potential reuse of the land. This policy also has um, six policy strategies. Uh, the first one dealing with unreclaimed lands, uh, basically restoring and enhancing unreclaimed land in and around river, creek, and drainage corridors. The second strategy deals with reclamation requirements, requiring existing and future mining operations to reclaim lands during and after mining in an effort to create wildlife habitat, restore vegetation, contribute to flood storage, and provide appropriate residential, commercial, recreational, and or educational development opportunities. The third strategy deals with impact mitigation, which um, states strengthen resource extraction regulations to require such uses to mitigate impacts to the natural environment, infrastructure, and the surrounding community, and require county review and approval of reclamation plans. The fourth strategy deals with multi-purpose uses for reclaimed land, encourage reclaimed of extracted sites to be multi-purpose in use, meaning water storage, passive recreation, and wildlife habitat. The fifth strategy deals with implement existing plans, such that implementing the recommendations set forth in the South Platte River Heritage Plan, the Adams County Space, Open Space Parks and Trails Master Plan regarding reclamation and reuse of sand and gravel extraction uses along the Platte River Corridor. And the final strategy deals with compliance with Mineral Extraction Master Plan. All mining and reclamation activities shall meet the requirements of the Adams County Mineral Extraction Master Plan. All these strategies and this policy was kept in mind when reviewing and recommending these regulations. So currently, the oil and gas drilling and production review process is essentially starts at the state with the COGC receiving from an operator Form 2, which is an application for permit to drill, deepen, re-enter, or recomplete and operate, and also Form 2A, which is oil and gas location assessment. It's this Form 2A that is forwarded to the county by the COGCC, in which the time starts for our review, which is the 20-day 20, um, 20 review process. Um, this process also includes um, our local government designee, which is in our transportation department, um, the planning and development department, and the GIS supervisor in the county's business solutions group to um, do their part in um, notifying homeowners and uh, municipalities within a half mile of proposed well sites. The LGD reviews Form 2A as far as the location assessment with respect to access and any other issues that may arise. Um, recipients uh, send all comments to COGCC, meaning that anyone who has a comment about the location of the well needs to um, directly send their comments to COGCC as the county does not get involved with those. So the county issues two permits. One is a rig and move permit for $500 and a local oil and gas permit. Once everything is set up, the LGD goes back and reassesses that everything has been set up as per the site plan. And then that permit is issued for $200. There is no public hearing process. The important role of our local government designee cannot be stressed enough. The COGCC rules provide for a consultation with the local governments, and this is through our local government designee. The COGCC also states that its rules shall not negate the authority of local and county governments so long as such local regulation is not an operational conflict. 
The LGD receives all documents required by the COGCC, and the LGD can do four things. It can request conditions of approval into the state permits, ask for a consultation with an operator, ask for a consult with CDPHE, which is the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, to consult on a proposed oil and gas location based on concerns regarding public health, safety, welfare, or impacts to the environment, and also inspect oil and gas well sites and oil and gas facilities, thus providing any complaints to COGC directly as well. I want to also mention that Adams County regulations also have um, two regulations dealing with stormwater. They're in Chapter 9. Um, they deal with the stormwater wa quality permit, which is all construction activity within the MS4 permitted area that disturbs one or more acres or is part of a larger common plan of development. The requirements is a stormwater quality permit application, an SWMP, a BMP cost opinion worksheet, and surety. 14 wells are in the MS4 permitted area, however, all drilled prior to the MS4 regulations. In section 950101 regarding oil and gas sites, all oil and gas sites shall comply with the COGCC rules and regulations, and all oil and gas sites constructed within the county's MS4 permitted areas shall comply with and be inspected by the county for these stormwater quality regulations. However, the county has never done an inspection since no wells are within an MS4 permitted area and disturbed an acre or more of land since the implementation of the MS4 regulations. Both things need to occur. This is a map showing just some of the MS4 permitted areas, uh, circled in red. With respect to our recommendations, there was a lot of research that went into um, these recommendations, staff research, oil and gas regulations, and memorandum of understandings, or MOUs, in other Colorado jurisdictions, including the counties of Arapaho, Boulder, Elbert, Garfield, Gunnison, and Weld, the city and county of Broomfield, the towns of Erie and Frederick, and also the cities of Aurora, Fort Collins, and Longmont. We had plenty of public outreach, including many meetings with the oil and gas industry, and also um, public meetings both in the evening and in the daytime with um, citizens and the general public to get their feedback, as well as doing a presentation and also receiving a lot of feedback from the um, LEPC board, the Local Emergency Planning Committee. So now the purpose of the amendments is to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Adams County residents. It's also to provide for sound environmental practices through the control of all oil and gas operations in the unincorporated areas of Adams County and to prevent damage to county roads and bridges. That's the purpose of the regulations and the purpose of the Memorandum of Understanding or MOU is that the industry agrees to certain predetermined standards in the MOU. And some of these standards are more restrictive than the COGCC rules. However, the MOU offers an incentive for the industry if that if the MOU is executed, there is an administrative permit process. And if there is no MOU executed, then there is a special use permit um, process. And the special use permit takes after getting a full complete application 68 weeks, and it's a hearing before the Board of Adjustment. So the proposed regulation amendments deal with chapters one, two, three, and four, and chapters one is the administration, chapter two is application and permitting procedures, chapter three is zone district regulations, and chapter four is design requirements and performance standards, which include non-substantial miscellaneous and formatting cleanup changes. So in chapter one, this deals with the administration or essentially the authorities, and what we did was we added three authorities, article seven, eight, and 60, dealing with Colorado Air Quality Control, Colorado Water Quality Control Act and Oil and Gas Conservation Act, respectively, and we worked very closely with the county attorney's office regarding these authorities. In Chapter 2, this is actually where the special use permit process is, the application and permitting procedures um, that we needed to amend in order to have the special use permit process and the MOU. So in um, the various sections in Section 221101 is the purpose. It's basically clarifying the time frame. Our special use permit process usually only allows a maximum of five years. We had to lengthen this for the oil and gas um, permits. Also, we wanted to clarify that nothing in our regulations was creating an operational conflict and that the COGC has and the federal government has the authority as far as issuing oil and gas permits. Um, we wanted to also clarify the permit review steps as far as 
uh, replacing references to director of planning development with the county manager or his or her designee, conceptual review being required unless uh, this is met, uh, waived by the county manager or his or her designee. Um, termination of sufficiency, we added for oil and gas drilling and production, the county has authority to cite violations under its control pursuant to section 156 criminal remedies and enforcement. Uh, conditions of approval, we added two things. Um, we added, unless in the case of oil and gas drilling and production facilities in order to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the county and inhabitants of the area, we extended the five-year time limitation. And we also did this um, in another section as far as protecting the health, safety, and welfare. Criteria for approval, we just added general, uh, the wording, and also we added, which was very important, um, the cultural and historical resources and also water bodies and water quality. Um, which we, we felt was very important as far as a criteria for approval, making sure that those elements were covered in the application process. So in the amendments to the oil and gas drilling and production uh, MOU, we had two sections that we needed to add regarding any um, major changes like pit practices or technical review amendments such as uh, minor things like relocation of light poles. In the prerequisites for a technical review amendment, we actually listed out some of the original, um, six originally that were proposed that um, were not part of the full amendment. And also the effect of the approval revised to add language that a special use permit can only be transferable if conditioned by the Board of Adjustment. In chapter three, we basically have a use chart um, that's in the very beginning of chapter three. And this chapter was essentially just changing or adding the S to indicate a special use permit was required to make clarifications in this chart. And we added a designation under the industrial uses category, um, extraction or disposal uses. And also where the extraction or disposal uses referenced in zone districts, the following language um, was added, except oil and gas drilling and production shall be processed as a special use permit unless the county elects to execute a memorandum of understanding. And we referenced them to go to chapters two and four regarding these um, specifics. So when we go into chapter four, this is actually the design requirements and performance standards. And so we did a little clarification. Here is where we had a lot of the um, performance, special performance standards that really were preempted by the state um, regulations. And this is where a lot of the cleanup had to happen. Um, the general provisions, um, we added about access and fee permits and safety standards, stormwater controls, water bodies and quality, well plugging and abandonment and air emissions. Um, as far as specific spill and release reporting requirements, um, we worked very closely with the industry and also with the LEPC regarding anything reportable to the COGCC regarding spills and releases shall also be reported to the um, LGD, the OEM, the LEPC, the Sheriff's Office, Planning Development Department, Transportation Department, and the local fire district. We added some definitions. We also um, tweaked uh, some of the, the drilling and production review as far as the amendments to the MOU, the full and technical review. Um, Non-compliance as far as what would happen if they were not in compliance um, with the regulations. And we did not uh, change anything. We've kept the residential construction standards the same as far as a 250 foot buffer from oil and gas wells and a waiver from property owner if within 300 feet of existing wells. This is when an oil and well actually exists already and a developer wants to develop near an oil and gas well, we have um, setback requirements. So in the MOU, um, the Memorandum of Understanding, as I had stated, contains certain predetermined standards that enhance the COGCC rules. And in the MOU, MOU that has been um, reached, um, these standards include things like such as pit practices, water supply, baseline testing, berms, weed control, spill and release management, aesthetics, dealing with fencing, colors and lighting, noise mitigation, record keeping, cultural and historical protection, and also, um, again, sorry, record keeping. So and if an operator enters into an MOU with the county, then the permit process will be similar to that described above, basically the administrative process. Um, if it does not enter an MOU, then they need to get a special use permit. 
And this, um, these amendments were the ones that we just discussed in Chapter 2, clarifying typical special use permit time frame of five years, which does not apply to oil and gas facilities, the criteria for approval, the six to eight week time frame once a completed application is received, and also a public hearing before the Board of Adjustment. So the referral comments that we received were uh, Arapahoe County, Well County, City of Westminster, School District 27J, Strasburg Parks and Recreation District, E-470 Public Highway Authority, CDPHE, Excel Energy, all responded with no comments or concerns. Tri-County Health and Commerce City did respond with comments or additional changes. Tri-County Health responded that um, they were concerned about proper wastewater management at oil and gas sites and reporting water quality testing results. They had recommended um, the following language that operator agrees to comply with Tri-County Health Department's regulation number 0-14 on-site wastewater treatment systems as adopted or modified. The operator agrees to contact TCHD in a timely manner to arrange for the processing or appropriate application materials and required inspections. Um, the staff said they would add recommended language to the MAU and similar provisions under the criteria for approval for special use permit. This was also discussed with the industry um, and they had um, no problem with adding this language. Tri-County Health Department also recommended to include in the MOU um, a provision that requires the operator to contact the county and or TCHD with water quality testing results. Um, we discussed this at length. And because it is public information, once it is delivered to COGCC, the industry um, was fine with reporting uh, this to TCHD. Uh, the staff response, um, the MOU does state that the operator will be in compliance with all federal, state, and local laws, which would include abiding by TCHD's rules with water quality. Additional language will be added to the MOU, which it has. And TCHD shall also be notified with any and all public health issues, such as water quality testing. Commerce City requested that any memorandum of understanding for oil and gas operations within or within one mile of the city's growth boundary be referred to them for review and comment. We looked at this and basically the state requires a half mile notification when baseline water testing is necessary. This is the largest notification area requirement as opposed to the typical 500 feet notification. The county and state maintain web pages which are available to the public and contain all oil and gas permit information. Adams County feels that the half mile notification is adequate. Public comments. We received three citizen comments uh, regarding the historical, cultural, wildlife, and archaeological provisions. Um, these were originally contained in Chapter 4. We moved them to Chapter 2 and also the MOU. Um, we did not want to create an operational conflict, so the, hence they were moved. And staff advised citizens that um, of this uh, moving, and they were fine with um, them being moved and also we discussed this at length with the industry um, as far as we put in to the extent possible and the other agencies. Um, the Basically the staff felt that we did not want to be History Colorado or be those experts. These are the, the oversight of these matters deal with um, are in the purview of those agencies as they should stay there. So we've also received comments from Anadarko Petroleum Corporation. Uh, APC appreciated the county's time and hard work, a need for a substantive discussion regarding Colorado Oil and Gas Association proposed MOU, which we received on September 10, 2014, prior to the Planning Commission submitting a recommendation of approval. Um, staff response, this county and the industry have been meeting, discussing, and working on several iterations of the MOU. The proposed MOU was redistributed to the industry after meetings with the industry on September 17th and October 31st, 2014. Uh, the MOU um, has incorporated some of COGA's suggested changes, including but not limited steel rimmed berms, noise mitigation, private roads, COGCC, Form 19 as a requirement for spill and release management, other road base operations. Uh, options with fire district approval and dust mitigation and the county is proposing future meetings which we have met and some of these um, things have already been worked out with the industry. APC's comments uh, also went in on to um, the regulation amendments such as section 2 and applicability of number 9 and um, we actually included the language as proposed, which was the term of a special use permit shall be limited to the absolute minimum term necessary for the proposed use, 
but in no case shall exceed five years unless in the case of oil and gas drilling and production facilities. The term of a special use permit for oil and gas drilling and production facilities shall expire upon plugging, abandonment, and final reclamation of the location in accordance with the regulations of the COGCC. The second recommendation by APC was um, concerning in Chapter 4 with safety standards, and APC stated that reporting requirements are set by the state, which states that the local government can designate the appropriate personnel to receive notification. Uh, APC suggested that the county develop an internal mechanism for distribution of reportable information. Staff responded that it disagreed to the limited notice. Staff believed that the listed personnel are necessary in order to ensure the safety and protection of first responders, residents, and the environment from any spills and releases from oil and gas well drilling and production facilities. The industry and staff have since talked about this, and everybody is in agreement with re uh, reporting to these um, agencies and uh, county departments. General comments referring to the MOU and its intent to provide the county with additional best management practices and also give operators a consistent and timely approval of permits was the last comment that APC had. So during the Planning Commission hearing on November 13, 2014, uh, the Planning Commission unanimously approved the recommendations um, staff introduced into the record. Uh, meeting agenda and sign-in sheet for an October 9, 29, 2014 meeting with the industry as applicants exhibit number one. We also had additional comments received subsequent to the October 29, 2014 Planning Commission staff report, which were ex applicants exhibit number two, which were the three citizen comments which we have already discussed. Both COGCC and COGA ha gave presentations providing brief overviews of their organizations and their roles with respect to oil and gas drilling and production in the state. Anna Darko um, at the hearing spoke and re reiterated its concerns as outlined in its November 12, 2014 letter as it was um, titled Applicants Exhibit Number 2. ABC thanked the county staff for its time and hard work but felt that more discussion needed to take place about the MOU prior to the Planning Commission submitting a recommendation of approval. ABC made two recommendations to the regulation amendments and um, as I have read already into the record, those two recommendations, um, the first one was accepted um, as far as the time limit language and also as far as the additional agencies and personnel being um, notified of any spills and releases. So the industry and staff met again on December 5th to work towards a consensus on an MOU. Industry is satisfied with the regulations and was primarily concerned about the inclusion of WellConnect language in the MOU. Planning Commission approved the regulations and encouraged the industry to continue to work with staff on the MOU. So the Board of County Commissioners um, continued this case on December 16, 2014 in order for the industry and staff to finalize an MOU. A final MOU was done, it was agreed upon, and it was distributed to the industry for signature on December 22, 2014. The staff has received um, executed MOUs from Bill Barrett and Great Western, which we received yesterday, and also received yesterday letters of support and intent to sign the MOU from both Anadarko Petroleum and ConocoPhillips. The recommendation of the staff is that we believe the proposed changes are needed. The changes will protect the health, safety, and welfare of the Adams County residents to provide for sound environmental practices through the control of oil and gas operations in unincorporated areas of Adams County and to prevent damage to county roads and bridges. The changes will provide increased information sharing between the county, residents, COGC, C, and the industry, and staff is recommending approval with three findings of fact. And that concludes the staff report. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do you have questions for staff? Go ahead. Um, when we had last uh, talked about this, you know, we continued the public hearing and then had a planning session about it, um, I think, to address issues primarily with the with the MOU, um, other than the Well Connect issue, which I think you outlined, where can you talk about the specific uh, changes that were incorporated based on that continuance and that time frame? Clearly, we've got a couple people that signed it already, so s something must have happened. Um, thank you. Actually, it was primarily the Well Connect language. We also had a phone conference as far as just language regarding pit practices. Um, there was some. Uh, just some tweaking of language as far as brine water, fresh water, um, nothing too substantial um, as far as anything that would affect um, 
anything majorly. It was just more of wordsmithing, if you will. Um, but the biggest thing was the Well Connect language and making sure that the board was okay with the Well Connect language. And we needed to, before they wanted to move on, they wanted to make sure the board was okay with um, the Well Connect language, which was the study session. So that was the yep. primary issue. I understand. Thank you. The other question that I had was with regard to time frames. It talks about, uh, you know, if you choose not to sign the MOU and you do, a, you know, special use permit, um, that's a normally a six to eight week time frame. Uh, that's from the time when you receive an application, right? Um, as I understand correctly. If the application, that is correct, if the application is complete, then yes, it would be a six to eight week time frame. If the application is missing information or someone hasn't right. done their due diligence with cultural or water bodies or water testing, then there would be a delay. But I yes, six to eight weeks. I understand that. Um, in the context of someone who happens to sign the MLU and then goes mm -hmm. through kind of an administrative process, what's the time frame for that? Uh, right now, it's usually less than two weeks. It's probably around a week. It's 20 days is that time frame that the COGCC allows. So if the MOU is signed, we get the Form 2A. It goes to the LGD. If were there any comments, if there is a floodplain use permit, it might be delayed a little. But usually, that's already uh, taken into account by the industry. And it's already talked um, about with the transportation department even before the permit is even submitted. But it's usually about a week to two weeks that that permit is issued. Okay, thanks. Commissioners, do we have any other questions? I just have a question. I know that we uh, outlined certain um, industries that came in and signed this. What is the process for others that may come into Adams County and how do they fall into that same MOU process? Sure. Um, our discussions uh, dealt with probably 99% of the oil and gas uh, drilling operation operators in the county. Um, the MOU is actually when they come in for a permit or it's on our website and I believe that memorandum of understanding is pretty much um, a practice in the state with many of the industries. They know what the counties are doing, especially Adams County. This has been um, at the forefront of many of their um, agendas as far as getting this done because Adams County is an important county for drilling practices. Um, but as far as somebody who, a little operator who comes in, they we have an application process. And so when they come in, um, I would think that if they're new to the county, they're going to call the Planning and Development Department, in which case we'll tell them about the MOU, we'll send them a copy. Um, if there are any questions or if legal counsel has any questions, they can discuss them with planning or our county attorney's office and then also tell them about um, the special use permit process if they don't want to sign the MOU. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No other questions. Would the applicant like to make us, or is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a statement on this? Seeing none, commissioners, do I have a motion? Let's go. Yes, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to um, enter into the record the two MOUs and the two letters of support just as exhibits to the record. That's all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's the one from Great Western and Bill Barrett, and then the uh, letters of support from Anna Darko and uh, Conical Phillips. Is that correct? Okay, thank you. Um, the uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to move to approve it, or excuse me, uh, PLN 2014-38 Oil and Gas Regulation Amendments. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Hanson. Aye. Commissioner Henry. Yes. Commissioner Tedesco. Aye. Thank you. Um, could we also, when you do this, I know this presentation was, you know, put together for us today. Um, make sure that the uh, grammar and the language in the in the actual, there were some missing words and some uh, misspellings. If we could get those taken care of when you actually put that that in, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. <laughs>